Let it go, Glenn. Oh, what were you saying? I want to hear. Is, uh, uh, uh. You got it. You might get off. He's not getting off. Think positive. Yeah. I'm thinking positive. Okay. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh it's a oh, man. Glenn, it's not a cod. It's not a cod. It's <laughs> a nice salmon. It's a little beautiful look. looking salmon. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. Sail, the outdoors superstore. Fisher Girl, catch the passion. All right, Glenn. By the way, this is my good friend, Glenn Meadows. He came all the way from Newfoundland to catch some of these salmon and trout that we have here in Lake Ontario. I'm just gonna turn that clicker off, okay? There, that's better so we can talk. Okay, so Glenn, when you get it a little closer, we don't wanna reel in too much line, right? If it might wanna to go to the back, we gotta be careful that we don't run into the line because okay. we got the downrigger set. Yeah. Right now we got this fish that's swimming above, uh, in front of us. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah, I like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice Perfect. chinook. Nice wow. chinook. Nice big a little chinook. closer, a little closer. Oh! Nice fish. Glenn! <laughs> How big is he, Aldo? Oh, let me take a look. Uh, it looks like he's about 18 or 19 pounds. He probably hasn't been eating for a couple weeks. Okay. Wow. Nice big salmon. Okay, Glenn, I'm gonna bring him in, okay? Okay, bring him in. Hopefully he won't flop out. Oh, oh nice, nice Chinook. Okay, you ready to hold him? He's, he might kick. Glenn, it's not a cod. It's not a cod. It's a nice salmon, <laughs> it's a Chinook. beautiful fish. looking salmon. Okay, I'm gonna see if that one hook will come out without him thrashing. I've got the pliers, but they're in the bag, obviously. I haven't taken them out yet. There, good, we got that. I'm gonna put it over there. Isn't that a nice Chinook? What a nice Chinook. Okay, so that fish is a male. He's already turned dark, Glenn. Yep. Because they wanna start going up into the river mouths, right, to yep. spawn. So it's a beautiful specimen. We could keep it, but you know what? We're gonna let it go. We're sportsmen, right? We are so. Okay. Let's do it. Let me get him back in the net, and then we're gonna release him. Okay, I'm gonna get him back in. Oh, you know what? He's heavy, Glenn. Aldo, is this the average size of fish you've been getting lately? Yeah, for the last couple of weeks now, we've been getting that size of fish. And they're staging, right? Yeah, they're just getting ready to go up river. Oh, some have them. gone up already. Right. And uh, whoa. Oh, sorry and about some, that. And some are still out here at the river mouth, and we're in 50, 50 to 60 feet of water. Okay, I'm going to reverse um, this net and just And there he it. goes. Look at that. All right. Where he went. Beautiful. Well done, Aldo. I get a lot of questions through our Canadian Sport Fishing website through Ask Italo and also on our You Find Fish app through Ask a Pro, where people ask me what kind of fishing line should I be using. For example, if I'm trout fishing or salmon fishing, should I be using a braid or a monofilament line? Well, here's the answer. Both are good to use depending what type of trolling you're doing. On this particular reel, which is the Rapala North Coast by Rapala, mooching reel and you can see that it's loaded with monofilament line and it's also rigged on a pretty flexible downrigger rod. Now the reason I've gone with the monofilament on this is because I want the stretch. Now this particular one is 20 pound test. 
So it's ideal if you're using devices that you have to connect the line to, like a line release or using a dipsy diver or even either other types of divers. So especially when you're fishing off of downriggers, because sometimes all those releases or devices can actually be tough on your line. And if you use too thin of a line, eventually you're going to have problems. So the reason I like monofilament on some of the reels is because you get stretch. One of the best ones from Suffix is called their Siege Line. And uh, it's excellent whether you're steelhead fish or whether you like the salmon and trout fish. Now you can see from this pool that the line is a green color. That's because it's almost invisible in clear water. Now the reason this is a 3,000 yard spool is because when you're reeling in large reels like this, you have to have a lot of line capacity because this will take up to 500 yards of line. You might think, well, when are you going to use all that line? Believe me, if you get a large salmon in open water, a fresh silver fish that maybe is 30 to 50 pounds or heavier, and one of the largest ones landed in BC was 84 pounds this past summer, that fish is going to spool a lot of line off. All right, nice fish, Italo. All right, I'm just gonna take the clicker off so it's a little bit quiet. Okay, I'm gonna get the net. You know what? Oh, it's right on top. It looks like a rainbow or is it a little silver salmon? I can't tell. You know, Glenn was saying, can we have some fresh fish done on the barbecue or somehow? Because where Glenn comes from in Newfoundland, they have these delicious cod. They got other fish too, Atlantic salmon that you get in the stream close to your place. And I said, you know what? If we get a smaller one, we'll keep it. We don't want to keep those big salmon. We've, it's nice because we've got actually a wind blowing us in the direction that we're going in, which is perfect. This is good. Aldo's got the lucky strike net ready. Nice fish. It's a male. Is that a cohort? Oh, it's a rainbow. It's got to be a rainbow, right? Whoa, oh, he jumped out of the net. Did you see that? I saw that. Aldo. <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, ready? I like it. You got him. We you got, got him. him. Glenn, good news. Perfect eating size. We have Here. perfect eating size, buddy. Good. Sounds good. for the barbecue. Nice looking fish. Hold it up for one second. Aldo, that was good. Just getting the thing out of the net. Yeah. Careful, nice silver fish, eh? Here, I'll hold it up so you can see the fly, because I'll tell the viewers what we're using here. It's just perfect. Yeah, caught up a little bit. Okay, so there's that rainbow. You can see how hard he hit. It's got the one single hook in the side and the treble hook in the mouth, and all wrapped up in the line, which is normal for rainbows. But this guy's a nice silver fish. I'm guessing he's a little five pound. Yeah. You see a lot of fish, right? Yeah, it's a nice for being out here. So it's a perfect eating size. So we're going to keep this one. We're going to let all those big salmon go. See if I can get the hooks out. Hey, perfect. I got it. Look at that. Nice rainbow right here from Lake Ontario. And uh, we're talking uh, September here, getting these nice fish. Good fish. Okay. We're going to get them in the cooler, Aldo. Perfect. The You Find Fish Mobile Fishing app. Catch of the day. Jim Westman, how you doing? It's Tony from Canadian Sport Fishing Calling. Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I see that you uploaded a picture on our You Find Fish app. Well, you know what, Tony? I downloaded some of the pictures, got it up on your You Find Fish, and that's just the greatest thing. Just, you know, you can take a picture while you're fishing, send it up to the hemisphere there, and everybody can see that thing there. We went out on the Lake Erie and got into some smallmouth action. It was only about 11 to 15 feet of water. So we just tied bell sinker about half an ounce of weight at the end of the line. About a foot, foot and a half up on the line, we tied this single hook, and we just put a chartreuse minnow on it. And, uh, you know, we got a few of them a three to five pound range. It was a beautiful day. We got into some real nice smallmouth. It's so nice to get with my good friend Glenn Meadis. Glenn came all the way from Newfoundland to pick him up at the airport to fish with us here in Ontario. But not just that, I mean, he's got lots of fish in Newfoundland. He came here to show everybody this beautiful boat that he builds there. And they're called Seabreeze Boats, and they're made in Centerville, Newfoundland. And these boats are designed to go out in the open Atlantic. And one of the boats is right behind me. This is one of the smallest ones, it's a 19 footer, but it's ideal for fishing the Great Lakes and even inland lakes. Glenn, why don't you tell the viewers some of the key points of what makes these boats so special? So the first thing, Italo, would be actually our hull. This huh? is a, a modified V, the semi-displacement hull, with a full-length keel, hard chine. So basically in rough water, I mean, you're getting just a lazy fall and it just cuts. Wow. It's very easily planing. Um, right off the bat, you don't get this uh, 
dragging in the back of the boat where you're trying to get it up on plane. The boat is literally on plane just as you start to uh, thrust the engine. So, and I mean, what about the front? That's one of the biggest thing. Well, the front as well, it's got a very high bow. So yep. as you can see, normally, normally on boats, I mean, your bows come straight out off, but this one's got a nice sheer to it, nice high bow, and something that's not common in a lot of the boats that are being I like this days. flare to the way it comes out on both sides. That's right, pushes the water away from the boat. So it can take a good water, big this, water. This is like a blade at the front. Yes. This just plows through those waves, <laughs> eh? Exactly. Nice fish here. Okay. You know, the nice thing about being out here in Lake nice Ontario, rainbow. Ooh, it's, it's a is beautiful nice rainbow is that you can fish shallow for some of the bigger salmon, especially in August, September. Or you can come out here in deeper water. We're in about 200 feet right now. And uh, we were targeting some rainbows because these guys are plentiful out here. Pretty well the whole time, right? Well, I mean, spring, that, yeah, and that, yeah, and that's what happens. Like you, you'll fish the Chinooks right now. The Chinooks are staging to go up river. Yeah. So we'll target them in the morning. And then as the day comes along, those fish will start stop hitting. Yeah. And then we'll come out here and play around with some rainbows in the... Yeah, uh, yeah as we get closer to noon. And there he is. Yeah. All right. Nice silver fish. Okay. All right. I'm gonna bring him around here. We're actually gonna keep him out over the water. And you know what? This is another nice eating size. So we're gonna keep it yeah, and I think he's for a barbecue. Be, yeah, he's hooked well. One of the things when you get some of these fish out here, especially on the trolling lures, a lot of times they'll get hooked really well and they'll start Tell bleeding. Pass me that hook yeah, here, you can do that. Okay. You hold it up there. So you can see this fish is just perfect. I'm guessing it's about four pounds. It's a little female rainbow. Glenn, we're gonna eat good tonight. All right. Nice fish. Looking good. Fisher girl. Catch the passion. Okay, so this is an ideal fishing lure. It, it because it is three inches long, looks like a minnow, and it's made of balsa wood, so it floats. It's great for the bigger fish because it looks like a smaller fish. And this is ideal for fishing from shore because it won't sink to the bottom. And as you're reeling it in, if you come across some weeds in that, you just let it go, it'll rise to the surface, and you continue reeling it in. The one thing you have to remember when you're using a lure like this is that there are two treble hooks. So make sure that nobody's behind you or around you when you go to cast. And also, because it's made out of balsa wood, it's very light. So if it's windy, always try to cast with the wind. You're gonna get really good cast that way. Closed captioning is brought to you by Naden Boats, Canada's finest aluminum boats. This is a flasher, and it's used in deep water when you're trolling in depths to attract salmon. It actually looks like a salmon going through the water. And usually behind it, anywhere from about 15 to 30 inches, is a bait that's being pulled along. So in fact, it looks like a salmon that's feeding because it's flashing, and then there's one bait that's still available behind it. Other salmon see the flasher, they're attracted to it, and they hit the bait that's behind it. Now one of the popular baits that has originated from the west coast is using what's called a cut plug. Now this version of the cut plug is made by Trigger X and you can see that it comes in two parts. One is the actual caps or the heads and then the body which is the actual cut plug and you can see if I move it around it's very fleshy like and it's in a fluid that's impregnated with pheromones. So we actually put that body inside this head and it's the head if you can see that has a curvature on it that actually makes that cut plug go from side to side. So this is a very tantalizing action that works very well when you're fishing in deep water, especially if salmon and trout are feeding in open water in the Great Lakes. Wow, good, look at this. Okay, are you ready? He's gonna you might get off, because as soon as I get his head up, he's gonna start thrashing. So I'm gonna walk back. You'll notice that I can't reel anymore because we've got that diving device. Yeah. I'm gonna just reel down to it. And I'm gonna go back a bit more. Good thing this is a 19. Oh, 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 oh. Walk him, walk him back. Oh, there you go, you got him. Big head, I think it's a big male, okay. Aldo. Good one, Aldo. He's easy on the speed. Yeah, yeah, just You're a little me sore. Over. You're doing great. <laughs> Is this exciting or what, Aldo? 
How about it? Beautiful rainbow. It is a nice male. Now look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous, flashy rainbow? Oh, nice tons fish. of energy. That fish will probably go about eight, nine pounds. This one is a nice male. You talk about energy when he hit and came flying out of the water. And you can see why. OK, Aldo, we're going to get it great? back in the net. And I'm going to let it revive a little bit because he's got lots of energy. He wants to go back uh, in. OK. OK, we've got the hook out. You're doing great, nice and easy. OK, let me just get him in the water. We're moving at a pretty good speed, so I have to be careful here. I'm going to hold him up. We can slow down just a little bit, Glenn. OK, now what I'm going to do is reverse the net. And hopefully this guy will just shoot out. Come here. He wants to go, which is good. OK, got him out of there. Nice. I'm going to put that good net job, down for a minute. Now, Aldo, yes. how many days do you spend out on Lake Ontario a summer? Uh, lots, man. I don't even know. 200, 150? At least 150, but I'm, that's counting maybe more because of my, my uh, with private fishing myself, because I like to fish too, of right? Course, so of course. I do some charters and then we go out fun fishing and now, we'll fish a few tournaments. And how has this season been compared to other seasons as far as number of fish, number fantastic. of days that you could get out? Fantastic fishing, fantastic weather. Um, the fishing's been close to home the whole time, the whole summer. Good, we've been good. fishing between, all summer we've been fishing between 100 and 130 feet of water. Lots of spoons, you know, like uh, shoehorns and matrixes. And, uh, and and now we're just getting into the flasher fly stuff as these fish are staging, getting ready to go up okay. in the river. And pretty soon you're going to be winding down the Great Lakes fishing and you're going to be fishing the Niagara River, right? You got the it. The Chinooks are already in there. Yeah. The rainbows are starting to go in and yep. you do that all winter, right? Yeah, once the Chinooks are uh, once the Chinooks are done spawning, the Lakers will move in and uh, I find once the Lakers are in there, then the rainbows really, and the rainbows and the browns really start getting active in the river. And that usually st starts happening middle of October and we'll get them right till March. You know, when it comes to fishing the Great Lakes, especially in deeper water, whether you're fishing in 50 feet of water like we're doing today, or you're out in three, 400 feet of water, having the right setup with your rods and the right equipment is really important. Now you'll notice that on this sea breeze, we've got a couple of Canon electric downriggers. The nice thing about this downrigger is that it has an extendable shaft that will go way out. But because we only have a couple of downriggers in the boat, that shaft is collapsed down. If we were using this boat for chartering or we wanted to run more rods and we'd have a second downrigger, we'd probably have a short one at the back and then have a long arm one at the front to get the cables and the wiring away from one another. Now you'll also notice that both the downriggers have these nice rod holders. And what I like about these new Canon rod holders that come with the downriggers is that they're multi-directional. And that's really important, they're not fixed. So you can see here that this rod holder is pointing in because we've got that long lead core line out and we want it to go down the middle, away from the lines that are tighter to the boat. So the nice thing about these rod holders is that it's got two adjustment knobs. One is to adjust it up and down. The other knob is to adjust it horizontally, left and right. This way we can use multiple rods. And here on Lake Ontario, we're allowed two rods per angler. So we're allowed six rods to run at one time because there's three of us in the boat. But it's so nice to be able to spread them out so that when you get a fish, you've got the least amount of chance of getting line tangles. Now what both Aldo and I are holding up are rods and reels that are designed specifically for fishing the Great Lakes for using a little bit heavier line and also using some of the diving gear like this dipsy diver that I'm holding up and especially reels that have counters on them. So this particular rod is called the R-Type and it's made by Rapala and it's the downrigger rod and it's got the Hydrus counter reel on it. So you can see it right here. The nice thing about the counter reel is that whenever you start letting your line out, you can zero it by pushing the button. And then as you let the line out, you can know consistently how far your lead is, whether you're flat lining, you're using a diving device, or even sometimes um, using planer boards and going for fish that are in shallower water. We're in 
into a nice Chinook. We believe it's a nice Chinook. It just peeled off about 100 yards of line, and uh, it hit a dodger and a fly. So we haven't seen it yet. So this is where it's very important that Aldo has good boat control, and he's doing that. So the nice thing about fishing for Chinooks this time of the year is that they move into shallower water because they're staging for spawning. So these Chinook salmon are probably about four to five year old and they're anywhere from the mid-teens, 14, 15 pounds, and they can be as high as 30 plus pounds, 35, 36 pounds. So hopefully, if we get this fish in, you'll see that he's gonna have a little bit of color. That's how we know that they're staging. When they're out in open water feeding and they have no intentions of running up the river, they're a nice bright silver color. But as they get closer to spawning, they start to get a little bit darker, like an olive green back, more goldy on the sides, and sometimes much darker than that, even before they get in the river. Aldo, thank you for the net. Okay, Glenn, see if you can get him up towards the middle. I'm gonna put the net right here. Now you're gonna have to walk back because we got the line caught up there. Oh man, this is gonna be interesting. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Holy cow. You don't wanna come in yet. Glenn, you gotta turn, turn the boat to the left. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, hold on, Metello. I got him here. Okay. Oh, okay. Man. Wow. Listen, we're not hanging it up for the camera. <laughs> that was <laughs> a bit of a problem. Oh. That is a stuff. big fish. Okay. Woo! That, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, nice Chinook. Now, see what I was talking about the colors? You hold on to him now, He's like a, she's like a horse. You can see that it's got that nice darker <laughs> colors. So what we're gonna do is keep this fish, okay? We're gonna Sounds use good. the eggs for bait. And you know what? We're also gonna get some nice steaks. Mr. Guide Aldo, how heavy is she? Uh, That's a nice she's steak. heavy. 27, <laughs> I would say 27. 27. Mid 20s, mid 20s, yeah. perfect. Yeah, beautiful fish. Okay, we're gonna get it in the box. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Sale. The Outdoors Superstore. Fisher Girl. Catch the passion. You know, we decided to pull the lines up because it was time to get in and have some dinner. And we started taking them up one at a time. And sure enough, one of the Dipsy Diver rods hit. Keep the pressure on. Keep your rod tip high. You're doing great, Stop. Aldo. Oh. Oh. Another one, another one. Ooh, so I lost mine, and then you just took that one. You know the routine. You got to go back a bit. And whoa. Look at him jumping. Come here. Nice fish. We will give the viewers a nice look, and then we're going to release it. Because we've got a few fish to take home. Isn't and he gorgeous? Such a nice clean fish it is. Nice yeah, female rainbow. OK, there you go. And he should just drop off. There, beautiful. Five. What a great day's fishing, eh?